Like sand through the hourglass, so are the watches of our lives. Welcome to this Hobby of Hours, a very special edition today. I call it watch yapping with my boy Ricardo. He's going to be on screen in a minute. But please, by all means, don't forget, pick yourself up a book at www.hobbyofhours.com. 1001 watch designs made with Skynet and yours truly. Or pick yourself up some watch art. We got Porsche design and F14 and some rando dude on a motorcycle. Tons of fun and a fun way to support the channel. With no further ado, let us welcome Ricardo to the program. Ricardo! Hi, D. What's going on, my man? Hey, how are you? I'm doing really well. Uh, super excited to have you on the first edition of Watch Yapping uh, in the studio with our new recording system. I hope it all uh, sounds good out there in YouTube land. But uh, fabulous to be able to connect with you, brother. What is going on in your neck of the woods? It's really, really good to see you. I was out running around today, hardware stores and so on. And uh, for that reason, I wore my extra durable. Countycom Digital. Uh, Countycom.com. Check them out. Link in the description, uh, as is our discount code. Uh, all right. You're wearing that. What am I wearing? Omega Seamaster. Seamaster. Seamaster Speedmaster. What's the difference? Speedmaster reduced to electric boogaloo. Love this piece. Absolutely love this piece. All right. Oh, where do I begin? The watches of our lives. Uh, Ricardo is probably unhealthily obsessed <laughs> with the TPG saga, Time Peace Gentleman. And he texts me about this all the time. And instead of ignoring his texts, I'm like, you know, it's a cry for help. And I figured I should give him <laughs> a forum in which to express himself. And in case you've been living under a watch rock, uh, he's going to give us a little uh, background on the TPG scandal here to wit, here today. Take it away, brother. Okay, well, um, I'm going to address this uh, to people who may not have ever heard of TPG. TPG mm -hmm. is an acronym that stands for the Timepiece Gentleman, and he was a very big watch YouTuber. He was the biggest at one point, I think. And, at some uh, point. And it sort of corrupted a little bit because all of, a lot of other watch YouTubers glommed onto him and uh, elevated him in stature that maybe was uh, a risky thing to do. Hmm. And so uh, he started Why off, pray tell? <laughs> well, there were a few red flags. Number one, you know, Just primarily, a few, huh? primarily that he had been in and out of jail an awful lot and that he was on uh, probation and had an ankle monitor. Redemption and, story. Come on. Well, and I, I can buy that because I want to believe good things about people too and that they've yeah. turned around and so on. But like, uh, he was still getting in trouble. Um, he, you know, he bit. was he was muscled up. He had a deadpan sort of uh, delivery and, and, you know, kind of nothing behind those eyes. I just... Uh, a, a, a real estate developer in Houston who met him to buy a watch from him said yeah. he, he got the creeps from him and that it was conjecture he he didn't, and that he didn't know anything about watches. So, uh, all right, well, that's, boil that's, it down. What, what do we know this cat did? Well, he, he created a watch, uh, store in, in Houston and operated out there for a little while. And the whole, uh, style of the YouTube channel was, Flashing lifestyle, yeah. G, uh, G wagons, uh, out, you know, two hundred thousand dollar Audi, uh, eventually a Lambo, yes, uh, and also just a lot of weird stuff. He had a lot of uh, backpack dealers, you know, like eighteen year old backpack dealers hanging around his store, showing their inventory out of their backpacks and stuff, and it just seemed creepy and weird and, and not inherently wrong. But let, 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 let's get to the malfeasance that we actually know about. What did he do to well, people? Uh, he started uh, taking a lot of watches on consignment because he figured out, hey, people will hand me a whole bunch of inventory on consignment and I hand, hand them back a piece of paper with my name on it and then I get this watch and I can sell it and then I'm supposed to pay them, but they don't know exactly when I've sold it so I can kind of hang on to some of the money. Yeah, that's, um, that's kind of like the, the dark side of consignment, which uh, link in the description to Oshino Mali's video about that. Uh, excellent video, probably the best one that I've seen on the subject, which is more or less, you send your watch in to a dealer on a Monday, he could sell it on Tuesday, 
but yet he'll hold on to the money and use that money to buy and flip and buy and flip. And then maybe three weeks later or at the end of the month, he'll pay you out. And so that is the dark side of consignment, we'll call it. Uh, the negative aspect to that, I don't say Ponzi scheme, but floating money scheme, uh, keeping a business alive on cash flow is something you can do functionally, but it's the dark side. It's, it's uh, what we call a muy, muy no bueno. Right, and so then the long story short, he uh, considered himself just the biggest superstar that had ever lived. He moved to Los Angeles. He uh, had a crew of people that was working for him. Mm -hmm. He uh, got a, 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 a not, not a retail front storefront in Beverly Hills, but an office there. Yeah. And, all, and then ultimately he wound up renting what was billed as the priciest condo in Los Angeles at $90,000 a month. Well, I remember he got, he had a, a, a residence that got supposedly knocked off, which we all think is BS at this point, but it was also running a penthouse downtown at a hundred grand a month. And so he probably had either some financial backers or something shady going on, but more or less he's made off with $5 million of clients watches and they finally caught him, got him when they, they, what they trapped him in uh, Venice. Yes, it, 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 it's kind of a, part of the reason why I'm so interested in the story is because it's a sort of a Shakespearean tragedy. He went from the highest high down to uh, shuttering everything when the watch market uh, took a big dive. Uh, he, he, he was unable to, <clears throat> he was unable to liquidate watches for anything like what he owed. And uh, he lost the, the, the penthouse. He, he got a storage unit in Venice a block away from Gold's Gym. You can see it from the back sort of patio of Gold's yeah. Gym there. And uh, he uh, ha he moved his stuff in there, and he had a sleeping bag and was sleeping on the beach. So it he sounds, went. From it the... sounds like you were living in this unit next to him. You know so much. I don't know that it was necessarily <laughs> the market shift. I think he was just more or less a robber. And um, you know what? It's like musical chairs. Sooner or later, when the music stops, you have to find a chair. And it just kept going and spiraling, and the the bleeding of the money and whatever went out the window. So that's more or less the story, the backbeat of TPG. Uh, he is, we're waiting for the, the charges to be handed down for the legal system to do its thing. But guess what? The buyers of those watches, they are probably all out of luck because it's not like they found a cache or a cache of uh, those watches anywhere. But there's like two remaining questions that I find absolutely fascinating to consider. First of which is, he was doing some business with some gray market dealers for a good while now. And if we know he's a con man, it's conceivable that one of two things happened. Either one, he was supplanting real watches with fake watches and introduced those into the marketplace via the gray market dealers. We know who they are. Or, gosh, out and out selling people's watches keeping that money and then burning that money, right? So it's either one, if we as a consumer bought a watch from one of the gray market dealers who did business with him, A, we might have a fake that they may not know is a fake, or two, we're holding Pete Mitchell's watch. And yeah, which, which he never happen? got paid for. And uh, it's not, uh, listen, it's, the, the FBI is a serious uh, thing. They have the list of inventory with all the serial numbers. They have all the banking records. They have all the FedEx records. I wouldn't put it uh, out of possibility that they're going to be able to track down where a lot of these watches went. And people might get a knock on the door saying, hey, guess what? You're in possession of a stolen watch. Do you want exactly. to surrender it? Well, here's the thing. It's not actually stolen is the problem. And Federico had a great video about that where it's, yeah, I can't remember the phraseology, but he didn't actually steal it. He, they yeah, well, sent it to him yes, and he just never paid for it, which is slightly different in terms of the legal aspect of a legal definition. The, the suggestion that Federico made in his video was that this was theft by conversion, which is a yes. civil matter, not a criminal yeah. one. Thank you, theft by conversion. Uh, however, uh, the FBI seems to have begged to differ and they showed up and on uh, November, I think it was November 7th of last year, yeah. they showed up to the storage unit where Anthony was in there yeah. and they had a search warrant for the storage unit and a warrant for his arrest and they took him into custody. So apparently they believed that 
possibly because of the pattern, because he'd done it so many yeah. times to so many people, yeah. that it wasn't it wasn't just a business dispute. That this was intentional. Well, that's, and that's and that's that's good that the arm of the law is doing their part. But the the, the second part of this equation is how and when are you going to get a hat? Because my understanding is you really want some swag. <laughs> he wants a TPG hat. So if you have one that's legit. Uh, Send me a note, and I'll, I'll connect you with Ricardo. He wants a hat for some reason. Well, I, I sent a message to Darby, the videographer, and he offered to sell me his used hat for $150. Thought that was a little out of, out of, out of range. And in the in the last photo yeah. of Anthony at his storage unit, there's a, clearly a tub sitting right next to him, a clear plastic tub, and inside it are lots and lots of hats. So somewhere you just in this need world, one. you just need one. Somewhere in this world, there's a bunch of hats, and that would be an interesting souvenir to have out of the end. You know of what? Story. What you need to do is you need to keep track of the police auctions, and like two years from now, just go down there and bid on it. Two years from now, when no one's going to remember this stuff in two years, just get you a grip of hats from the police auction, brother. Well, I'll tell you what. This is a hot story. There's a lot of people watching it. The the the, the storage unit has too been... many people. They've threatened to put it up for auction, and then somebody came in, some mysterious person came in and paid the fee for the storage unit. So it's still, it's still being it's still rented. In stasis. So, That's interesting. I wonder yeah. who did that. Hmm. Unknown. And now there's 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 tell that there's a second storage unit somewhere that has much much more swag in it, like hoodies and t-shirts and all According that. According to so, the text message I got last <laughs> night at I think two in the morning, <laughs> there are approximately five thousand hoodies in that second <laughs> unit no not a mention of a hat i'm like dude this is not watch news it was actually that text that made me want to do this video but the second major point and i wanted to share with you and explore with you is actually the one piece of value add i can add to this conversation salaciousness and watch gossip about scandals is not my jam it's not my it's not my thing but there is something that we can glean from this and that is uh, consignment we already know about the bad consignment. Legit. Go check out Ushin's video. It is amazingly good. But there can be good consignment. And what I mean by that is I would absolutely consign a watch with a dealer that I knew, which is coincidentally also going to be someone that has a brick and mortar. Uh, Rose City, he consigns watches in San Francisco with two places. And if he ever wants to go pick up his watch, he can take a cab ride and pick it up because it's literally sitting in their case for sale, uh, point of sale, in case someone comes into the store to buy it. Those are the conditions in which I would consign a watch. Or if there's someone who I had a business relationship where I was buying watches, I would ship it to them. But sending your watch to a stranger just because they have you know, presence on YouTube and so forth, that's that's for me that's not a business decision i would make i think that's absolutely right um it, it's said over and over in various articles in case you're interested in the tpg saga by the way there is a great article on business insider by david kushner that came out on february 4th called the time bandit excellent yeah. title send me the uh, link but, I'll, I'll put it in the description of the video of course uh and it mentions that the whole business runs on rep it's a small world and the business runs on reputation yeah. and Reputation the, the, everything. These dealers, and there, you know, to their credit, there are dealers out there that Anthony wanted to shoot video with that didn't want anything to do with them because they, they looked at them and they saw red flags and they're like, I don't want to associate my business and my YouTube channel and whatever with this guy. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's said, it, it's, a, it's a catchphrase that the business runs on reputation, yeah. but it's really true. And reputation isn't something you have just because a lot of people are looking at your YouTube channel, as you've said. Well, let's have a flashback moment. You and I met at a Las Vegas meetup, uh, the Paul Thorpe meetup. Roman was there, Nico was there, you were there, Kurt was there. I got two friends out of that meetup. Amazing. Uh, and TPG was there. He wasn't at the. He wasn't at the meetup. Oh, okay. He, was he wasn't. At, at, he was. He was in show. Vegas. Oh, he was at the show. Because the, was at, the not, IWJG. Not only was he at the show, but one of the guys he beat out of a watch was was stalking the Tropicana looking for him and That's got like hilarious. grabbed by security and trespassed off the property. Wow. That was that that was that week. Dude, I was at that show. I went in there. I know, isn't it? I it's a, that's why it's interesting. A little bit. Uh, let's not go too far. But uh you you had a funny saying that you've retold to me from that where you kind of spotted this guy from a mile away. Go ahead and retell it. 
Uh, remind me which one we're talking about. You were talking to, I think, Paul or Kurt about the fact that you didn't trust this fellow. I guess he'd gained some YouTube presence by then, but that was the cause. That's correct. I, I, w I was wearing my uh, my kind of heavy hitter, my uh, two-tone uh, root, root beer. beer. Uh, 126711CHNR. Yep. Uh, uh, and Paul Thorpe had mentioned in his video that day that it was the, the, the best of the two tones. So I, you know, I, I was kind of excited to go up and show him. And, yeah, and, and I got talking to Paul and I said, you know, Paul, I, I really like your channel. I, I, I like the sincerity that comes across. And, uh, you know, you're a trustworthy guy. I would trust you to buy a watch from you. Yeah. And he said, thank you. And I said, I would not trust DPG. <laughs> and I said that because- You called it a mile away. I, you didn't have to look too hard to see the red flags and not be blinded by his subscriber count. That's kind of what did everybody in. Yeah, I don't, I, I kind of don't, here's the thing. I don't, I don't traffic in those level of watches, Audemars Piguet, high-end Rolexes, R Ricardo Mille watches, it's not my jam. So his channel was never a thing for me. So I just have a blind eye to a certain aspect of the market. But like once I caught word, that he was renting that penthouse in LA, having lived in LA, a hundred grand a month. I'm uh -huh. sorry, there, there is not enough watch margin in the world to pull that at that transactional level, just not. So maybe he had some backing. Although at that time, I seem to recall Roman and a couple other people trying to get a television deal with I think a Netflix or someone about watch dealing. I don't remember if there were open auditions with Netflix or whomever for that, but maybe that was part of the angle for that business is, you know, standing up a, like you said, flex lifestyle that would attract the Netflix deal to just sign on, like because so much is already in place. So that, I, I'm speculating, I have no idea, but I, I, I think you're right about that. that. And I think that TPG, he, if you look, if you go back and look and find some of his old videos when he's in LA, the videography is fantastic. The editing is fantastic. He was creating a reality show, and he was. That's I think his. I think his exit plan was that reality show turns into a Pawn Stars or a Netflix series. Yeah, or that, or Marky Mark was going to play him in a major film, which is <laughs> still a possibility. I, it, it even more so now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. All right. Well, that's crazy. So, all right. Final chance, Ricardo. Anything else you want to say about the TPG saga until it goes to trial? Because I'm putting you on moratorium until the trial comes around. The floor <laughs> is yours, my brother. Express uh, whatever you want to express. The mic is yours. I, I, it's a cautionary tale. Uh, Icarus, if you know what I mean, great. If you don't, that's great too, but you should probably read more. Oh, too funny. He flew too close to the sun and like... Who or whose dad would attach your wings with candle wax? Oh, Daedalus, <laughs> shame on you, sir. Anywho, uh, thank you for the time, my brother. Always great to chat watches with you. And if you have enjoyed this episode, by all means, like, comment, subscribe, and please send me a hat so I could pass it along to my boy. All right, hope that wherever you are in this wonderful, beautiful hobby of ours, you are doing well, and we will catch you in the next one. Peace out, Ricardo. Peace out, D. We'll catch you in the next one, brother. Be well. Bye-bye. Bye. Pick up a book. 1001 Watch Designs, Volume 1. We've got line art, oil paintings, steampunk, and even super-duper realistic ones. Ones that you could probably put on your wrist today. It's a good bit of fun and a great way to share your support. Thanks for coming along on the ride.